Okay, so we're very happy to have Zuzana Hanikova from the Czech Academy of Sciences here to speak on Vopenka's alternative set theory and its mathematical context. Go ahead. Thank you. So thanks uh, to all the organizers for uh, inviting me to speak uh, about this topic. Um, um, perhaps uh, I should say upfront that uh, my claim to the ASD is small. Uh, I don't work in the theory mathematically. And uh, my aim was uh, in studying the ASD was uh, mainly historical and it is a part of a larger project uh, in which I'm trying to map uh, the developments in uh, Czech uh, mathematical logic of the 20th century. This is also something that is uh, kind of missing from this uh, slide because uh, um, the mathematical context of uh, Wopinka's alternative set theory could easily mean, for example, Bolzano, to whom he uh, aim to relate a lot or Leibniz even, but this is not something I want to talk about. I would like to basically start with uh, Colin's work and uh, go uh, uh, towards the, uh, the contemporary developments. And of course, uh, uh, there are several facets uh, to this topic. So. Uh, so, um, one can talk about the, the mathematics proper, such as the formal theory, its approximatization, and uh, some concepts that were developed in the theory. But uh, hand in hand in that, one should also mention the motivations for that work. So, if you just uh, realize that uh, Vopienka actually worked in a uh, theory that was based on uh, finite sets. So mathematically, this is uh, kind of kicking yourself in the foot because everything becomes suddenly much, much more difficult. So, uh, so, so such a work uh, is difficult to contemplate without knowing the motivation for that. So I will be uh, variously during this talk uh, referring to uh, the mathematical concepts and the motivations and the uh, philosophical considerations, or I should say foundational considerations that were uh, in play. And I will do this in no particular order. So I will uh, shift uh, between uh, the facets as appropriate as I think best for the presentation. And uh, the last line on this slide uh, looks uh, kind of uh, obvious, but uh, uh, I know many, many people uh, in this seminar actually uh, uh, actively followed or even contributed to the development of the theory. So uh, I should uh, dis put forward a disclaimer because um, uh, some of the people who worked uh, in the theory uh, used the acronym ASD for a particle axiomatization. And uh, the term alternative set theory was uh, reserved for the broad concept of uh, uh, the work, such as, uh, such as uh, on a par with uh, Cantor set theory, for example, which also can have um, various axiomatizations. And ASD was uh, kept for a particular set of axioms. And this uh, distinction will not be maintained in this talk. So I just use, uh, intuit as, as intuitively, I use ASD just an acronym for, for uh, the title of the theory and the full broad concept. Mm. On the other hand, I know that some of you may have never heard about the theory. So I'd like to start with uh, some data. So the theory was very local. It was developed in the 1970s, uh, mainly in Prague, in Popenka's group uh, at the Faculty of Mathematics and Physics, but also some development took place in uh, Bratislava in the 80s later when mm, the theory kind of spread uh, in the country. But still, it was uh, very local. And one of the reasons for uh, this locality was, of course, the isolation of Czechoslovakia during the communist regime. And uh, time-wise, um, for the purpose of some periodization of Opinka's work, which was actually already uh, 
delivered in Sohor's biography of uh, Wotenka, which uh, was published in the special issue of Annals of the Black Logic dedicated to Wotenka. So the period of development of uh, the ASD can be roughly delimited uh, on the one hand by the publication of the previous um, monograph about the theory of semisets, which is quite different uh, from uh, the ASD uh, on the point of view which I will present today. Mainly, it is based on the uh, set theory of uh, full infinity. And uh, it, the, the, the active period lasted for about 20 years. And uh, during uh, that period, two monographs were published. Uh, the first monograph listed here, Mathematics in the Alternative Set Theory, is the canonical uh, reference in English for the theory. It was this about 120 pages, and uh, it is based on a manuscript which was uh, circulated by Wopenka already in 1973, as far as uh, I know. I don't have the manuscript, but uh, uh, it is referenced in some of the early papers. And uh, the other book was published in Slovak about 10 years uh, later, and the book uh, is uh, written around the same core, but it, it is much more voluminous and it gives various uh, motivations and historical detail. It makes references to Bozano and uh, it also presents a lot of criticism uh, of uh, the extant classical set theory. And apart from that, something that is not um, covered in the books there's a bunch of uh, journal papers published by members of the research group. And those papers- uh, uh, Susanna, can, can I quickly? No, we, we do ask questions. Yes, <laughs> during the talk, Although I always say it is not that easy because it, you always feel like you're interrupting the speaker. But however, a, 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 a quick question. Why was it published in Slovak? I, my understanding is that uh, it was published in Slovak for the benefit of the local community. And uh, Alena Vencuska uh, attempted to mm -hmm. uh, get it published in English, but it failed uh, mm -hmm. because there was not sufficient. And the book has been, I think, uh, but now, of course, I'm branching off into, uh, you know, my recollections of personal uh -huh. communication. Uh -huh. but, 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 she, but she said that she has a major part of the book translated into English, uh -huh. but, she, but no publisher was willing to... Uh, 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 no, no, so, to okay, so this is tangential. And, you know, I thought whether it was originally written in Slovak, but... but uh, it was in Czech, in, yes. in, Incidentally, I, I was talking two days ago to Andres Viavesis, who's now on the ASL Committee of Translations. And he was look, asking for advice about what would be worth republishing mm -hmm. in, a, in an English translation. I think this would be a perfect candidate. Yes. Uh, let, let, let's yes. talk more but, about but, but, but bear with me a minute. I will finish sure. this slide and then I will make another comment on that. So, All right. uh, so this was work uh, that uh, covered uh, the early developments and then there were, you know, the papers were published in the local journals, so they are available through the Czech uh, Digital Mathematical Library, where you can search them online, just uh, typing the name of the author into the search window. And uh, the papers are written by Wopinka's group, which was partly uh, fashioned as a seminar for students. So new people were always coming in, and usually the um, people remained uh, later on. I just uh, kept up with, with the proceedings of, um, by attending uh, the seminar on and on. And there was a new topic uh, every semester. And uh, this uh, process kind of terminated uh, in around the year 1989, when uh, after the Velvet Revolution, Wopenka entered politics. And then slowly uh, the group uh, dispersed, slowly it was ongoing process. So by the year 2000, you don't find any more publications about the ASD, mathematical publications. I mean, and Wopinka later went on to do his work in the history of mathematics. So he would publish about uh, geometry and about um, uh, Bolzano, for example, um, and even about uh, actually uh, uh, ma mathematics of the ancient Greece and so on. 
But I would always try to relate uh, uh, his earlier research in um, the ASD to uh, the historical um, historical the results, the fruits of his historical research. And uh, actually, uh, he published uh, another book about called New Infinitary Mathematics, and it was published uh, in 2015 in uh, in Czech here in uh, in Prague. And it is due to be published in English in April of this year. This book uh, is not completely similar to the AST in that the presentation is not axiomatic. And uh, I didn't read it, but what I, well, from what I've seen, I think the book does not stick uh, even to fully to the to the strictly uh, ASD uh, framework, like uh, not availing uh, itself of, uh, the, for example, transport model numbers and so on. So uh, I think uh, also based on uh, um, based on uh, a conversation I had uh, with Lopinka uh, about 10 years ago about it. He said that he preferred this uh, new treatment, the new infinitary mathematics to the old manuscript, uh, to, to the old books. And he no longer uh, uh, tried to have them translated and um, published them. But uh, uh, my personal opinion, it would be is that it would be extremely helpful if the book that exists in Slovak were available in English. Um, so this uh, slide just delimits the, the period of uh, active work uh, in the theory. And now I would like to start with uh, um, the uh, a controversial uh, approach to uh, what Wopinka calls Cantor set theory. So uh, Cantor set theory is a broad term that is used, uh, of course, uh, in Wopinka's work, you encounter it uh, uh, extremely often. So it was well to wonder what exactly, what exactly it might mean. So uh, Wopinka viewed uh, set theory as a development of uh, infinity. Cantor's infinity was actual infinity. And uh, he also uh, referred to what nowadays we would, thanks to Michael Hallett's beautiful book on uh, the limitation of size uh, uh, in uh, Cantorian mathematics, we would uh, term Cantorian finitism. So um, there are laws that infinite sets obey, and those laws are uh, essentially the same as uh, the laws for the finite sets. So uh, the Cantorian theory enables us to uh, treat uh, the infinite and the finite uh, uniformly. And uh, a pe peculiar thing about the term as the group use it is that uh, it refers uh, to, it, it's a sweeping term that refers to all the theories that use actual infinity in this uh, Cantorian fashion. And that includes also the theory of semisets, which is uh, the earlier work of uh, Wopenka's seminar, the seminar from the 1960s. And also uh, you can find references to new foundations. Uh, and this term. So um, this indicates that the, the term is much more broadly uh, than, for example, classical set theory. And uh, the usage is always dismissive. So Wopenka uh, stands uh, in opposition to actual infinity in mathematics. And uh, this is the compelling reason for his uh, development of uh, the ASD starting about uh, 1970, probably, uh, when he started to contemplate it. Another objection is, the, uh, is basically engendered by the independence results. So the independence results in his view show that uh, the theory 
is the dependent of formal means and uh, the results uh, about the infinite cardinalities are purely speculative. So uh, this is also something that the group uh, sought to distance themselves from. And uh, another observation is that uh, Cantor's theory has become the dominant ontology, which is a little bit of a problem for someone who uh, wants to de develop uh, an alternative set theory, because if you want to show that your, your alternative foundations are viable, then you should exhibit some uh, mathematics in them. And uh, if uh, all of mathematics, as Wopinka claimed, has become a part of Cantor's theory, then this might be pretty daunting task. So uh, Wopinka uh, circumvented this problem by always referring to pre-theoretical concepts. So he would uh, just like we would tell first year students that uh, the set omega in ZFC is a model of, um, uh, of natural numbers then he would always refer to pre-theoretical pre context con concepts such as the numerical domains and some topological concepts and uh, bring them in to the ASP. And he would, uh, in the development of the ASP, he would make hardly any references to the dominant ontology provided by uh, the classical ontology. Um, so as I said, the ASP is primarily a rejection of uh, uh, the actual infinity. And instead, Wopinka offers his own definitions, uh, which is uh, sometimes called natural infinity. And the natural infinity is based on a sort of indefiniteness that is perceived when one observes or encounters large collections. So in the ASP, these sets are classically finite. And um, Apart from sets, there are also classes. So it's a theory with classes like uh, the Lebanese or uh, Galimors. And uh, sets, formally speaking, sets would be the primary concepts. And uh, sorry, classes would be the primary concept, and the uh, sets would be uh, defined. And uh, the infinity, the natural infinity, manifests itself on large collections as an absence of service. So encountering the, so so one could actually wonder whether classes could be actually infinite actually infinite in the ASP but Wopinka uh, answers this question in the negative so his uh, view is that we don't have as uh, reasoners we don't have good access to actual infinity we cannot even contemplate it and uh, anytime we we, we, we believe that we contemplate actual infinity. What we actually do is we contemplate the, the, the potential infinity. So we don't have direct access to actual infinite objects. And the two concepts are conflated in our uh, apprehension of reality. And moreover, this is not all. Uh, he also suggests that we cannot even properly distinguish because of this uh, of this sequential access to infinity, we cannot properly distinguish it even between the potential infinite and the large finite. So if you open uh, one of his manuscripts, you will soon uh, discover that uh, he's attempting to develop a uniform treatment of uh, his potential infinite and the large finite. And uh, it's a it's it's a big uh, question how much uh, this project actually succeeded. Uh, I will say a little bit more about it at the end of the talk. So um, and uh, and uh, at some places when uh, Wopenka discusses the concepts of sets and classes, uh, he would mention that uh, sets uh, for him represent the exact knowledge, and classes may represent a sort of subjective view of uh, an observer. Uh, the point of uh, development, of pre especially in presenting the two books, was to convince the reader that ASP was uh, viable as uh, new foundations of, uh, of mathematics. So the books do not actually present um, the formalism as such, 
but they present mathematical concepts with the, uh, the aim of, uh, of swaying uh, the readership to, to, uh, to the view that uh, uh, potential infinity in this, uh, uh, in this treatment is completely viable as foundations. So now I want to say something about the axioms. So um, as I said, the theory has sets and classes. Sets could be defined, but I will start uh, just as in the Tolibna book, I will start uh, with presenting the theory for sets. So the theory for sets it's, uh, is the, exactly the uh, finite summer of Frankel theory, the theory of the Hanamite finite universe. Uh, obtained by replacing infinity with this negation. And uh, can you see the arrow? The just yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, regularity is uh, presented in this uh, in this uh, as a, as a schema in this form. Um, so this gives you uh, all the thermal Frankel axioms and vice versa. From the thermal Frankel axioms, you can uh, derive all of these uh, axioms and schemata. And the question is, of course, what happens when you add classes later? And Sakhar uh, has proved that in the uh, axiomatization, uh, which eventually became, which eventually was denoted by the acronym AST, presented in his papers about the metamathematics. Uh, AST is conservative over uh, some of finite some of Frankel for set formulas. So uh, in, in his particular axiomatization that developed from Webbinger's book, uh, you don't get any more theorems for sets. But this statement is the conservativity statement is dependent on uh, stronger means than the AST. Uh, on uh, basically, you need to have consistency of the AST. Uh, so this uh, set fragment, which I have presented, gives you, of course, the class of natural numbers, and it gives you um, cardinalities in terms of uh, set bijections, and uh, it gives you, you can define uh, operation just as you would on the ordinals. Uh, here you have finite ordinals. And uh, you can prove induction in N for set formulas. So this uh, class N with the defined operations and order gives you interpretations of piano, interpretation of uh, piano arithmetic. We, we will see that uh, um, just as you would expect, because this is after <laughs> semi non-standard models, uh, so just as you would expect, we get another uh, interpretation by uh, using some, some external means. Uh, and the, uh, so the, so the other, other sort that uh, uh, we avail ourselves of uh, are classes. Um, the axiom for uh, class comprehensions features uh, also non-normal formulas. So it's uh, Kalimov style. Uh, any formula uh, allows you to uh, define a class. Um, and here comes the natural infinity properly defined. So class is finite if all subclasses are sets. So this is the easy survey that uh, was mentioned in the introduction. Uh, so if a class is finite, it's actually a set, then you can have a class of finite sets. And uh, uh, on the other hand, some uh, sets uh, contain uh, proper uh, subclasses. Uh, this is uh, guaranteed by uh, the axiom of uh, proper semi-sets. And uh, such sets are, of course, infinite uh, using this definition. So by this, at this point, it is useful to completely abandon the uh, notion of classically finite and replace it by this uh, definition of naturally finite and naturally infinite. 
Um, it is worthwhile. Uh, it is worthwhile mentioning that uh, mm, the existence of uh, proper semi-sets is axiomatically uh, guaranteed. Uh, Okay, so now we have uh, axiom of choice. Maybe I wanted to mention uh, the concept of semi-set uh, semi in the context of the previous uh, theory of uh, semi-sets, which uh, was developed uh, uh, at the end of 1960s. Uh, uh, it, the book about it was published in 1972. Uh, so semi-set is a concept that uh, occurred uh, in connection with this uh, earlier theory and uh, the prototypical uh, semi-sets uh, considered there included, for example, the set of infinite natural numbers in the non-standard uh, models, uh, but also uh, some uh, uh, objects that arise as uh, subcollections, for example, but not sets in the sense of the interpretations in the constructible universe um, and so on. So uh, Hayek in this short paper presents uh, uh, compelling motivations for considering, uh, considering uh, semi-sets as mathematical objects. They are, they are classes, of course, uh, of sorts, but, uh, but it's worthwhile to consider them separately. And in order to, uh, to be able to have semi-sets, you have to change the axioms a little, you have to tweak. Uh, so you would basically add some sort uh, for which uh, you would consider only very weak uh, axioms for classes. And uh, that this would... Uh, uh, this would allow you to have uh, semi-sets in the universe, and some some theories based on uh, this uh, on the on the on this uh, starting point uh, can be uh, extended to set theory, and other theories cannot be extended to set theory, and this includes early, early attempts to axiomatize non-standard analysis. So back to uh, the AST. So we uh, in the AST, of course, we can we can form of the class of uh, finite natural numbers, and uh, finite natural numbers uh, mm -hmm. so, so, so the finite finite sets would give you uh, infinite natural numbers, and uh, because of the set bijections that we have. And we eventually obtain, of course, that Fn is a proper is a proper cut in N, uh, proper cut. Uh, and this uh, set, this uh, class Fn is uh, the uh, is the prototypical uh, semi set uh, in the theory. It's also uh, it is also used in the axiom of prolongation, and this is also an interpretation of uh, P A because. Um, the, of the restriction of operation, the, the, the FN is closed with, uh, with respect to uh, all the operations and you can prove induction for class formulas. Uh, so this gives you uh, the interpretation that also was, uh, for example, used in uh, the uh, for, uh, formalization of language. This is the pref preferred, uh, preferred interpretation for formalizing language. So the formalized language you would have uh, formal induction, which is listed here. Uh, this is the axiom of prolongation, which implies the uh, uh, existence of uh, proper uh, semi-sets. Uh, it says that class uh, functions on Fn can be prolonged to set functions. Um, so it's kind of an exaggeration. Um, and uh, as regards cardinalities, uh, obtained from class maps, we have uh, uh, countable sets, uh, count sorry, countable classes, which are equivalent to Fn uh, or to particular uh, finite natural numbers. And uh, countably infinite classes are proper semi-sets. 
And uh, this all already implies that uh, we have also another cardinality. And uh, to cater for cardinalities in the ASD, uh, the axiom of cardinality says that, says that there is only one uncountable cardinality. OK, so this is the, this is the axiomatization, which, uh, uh, for example, allows you to, to show the conservative statement which I mentioned. And of course, uh, Vopienka always declared that uh, this is just uh, um, a starting point and uh, extensions are welcome. Uh, so uh, some other axioms were contemplated. Uh, I think, uh, this might uh, so so when you open uh, when you open uh, the book or uh, download some papers about the ASD, what you will uh, see is that the authors invariably start with uh, uh, presenting the formalism in which they work. So this indicates uh, that the formalism was not uh, very stable, and. Uh, also, many papers uh, warn the reader that if the formalism changes, then of course the result in the the results in presented in the paper might uh, uh, not be valid anymore. So, um, well, on the one hand, I think it's uh, quite generous if the system is open and people are welcome to come up with more axioms. But on the other hand, given the size of the group and uh, this framework of openness. Um, um, it presented a, a problem for the for the for the exchange of results and uh, for uh, developing the, the the actually developing the mathematics rather than developing the foundational framework. Um, this is a stock picture uh, that. Uh, mm, Actually, actually, this pictures like this uh, with uh, something uh, disappearing in the distance uh, come up uh, not just in connection with the ASD, but in connection with infinity in general. And uh, these pictures represent the potential of infinity uh, invariably. Something uh, uh, in irregular intervals, something progresses away from you and uh, uh, towards whopping, I would say, towards the uh, horizon. And the uh, prolongation stipulates that uh, beyond the horizon, there's a particular point uh, to, to which, uh, and moreover, the point is something very concrete. It is represented by a set. So, for example, it would be like a leg of a journey when you take a train or something like that. But the, but, uh, uh, the interesting thing about these quotations is that uh, is that he refers to exact knowledge exceeding evidence. Uh, when you uh, read Popenka's text, you might occasionally get the impression that uh, uh, he's working empirically, that he, he also uses a lot of visual metaphors. So, uh, uh, so uh, one might wonder whether all, all of the mathematics is somehow based on empiricism. So, uh, this is uh, an example of a quotation that uh, indicates that this is not the case, that uh, actually um, exact knowledge can exceed evidence. And the axiom of prolongation uh, is uh, included towards this goal. So I will mention just one um, extension, just one extending axioms. And this is the axioms of uh, elementary equivalence, which is not uh, actually provable in the basic framework. So which is uh, um, somewhat unusual uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in the framework of, on the non-standard methods, because uh, this uh, uh, shows that the transfer that uh, one is used to is simply not available. So for example, in, in uh, in the ASD, thanks to conservativity, you would not be able to prove conservativity, uh, sorry, consistency uh, for uh, the formalization given by the class N. So the concepts uh, relating to formalization of language uh, uh, 
derived from the interpretation uh, given by N. So of course, this is by Gerl's theorem, and this is the conservative. But you can prove cons consistency for the uh, interpretation in the, in, in the sense of the interpretation provided by FN. So, and this is the actually, what Soho stresses in many places is this is actually the, the formalization uh, provided by uh, the uh, interpretation by FN is the preferred one also for uh, arithmetization for, 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 consider, for example, in the, in the axiom of uh, uh, formalized induction alone, when you formalize it, then you use uh, 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 FN, the concept from FN for formalizing the induction. There is a nice uh, work on um, uh, on the model version of this uh, consideration, uh, and the work was done by Emil Jabek in his uh, thesis, uh, studied the model logic of closed data for the LSD. Uh, Bopinka would not be uh, particularly interested in. Uh, in, in models of the ASD in, um, in classical set theory. And uh, it's fair to speculate that one of the reasons for that is that he, uh, uh, he, he, wanted, he actually he, he contested uh, the idea that uh, in order to, for a mathematical discipline to become established, it first needs to be interpreted in Samuel Frankel in classical set theory. So he would, uh, uh, with Chagrin, he would uh, uh, complain that uh, mathematical disciplines that have not been successfully uh, interpreted in Samuel Frankel set theory are virtually non existent. And for this reason, uh, I think uh, he was. Uh, uh, less than keen to uh, to work uh, towards such interpretation, but it has been done by uh, other people. So uh, here we have a theorem that which will be used for the conservativity. So the theorem says that uh, um, if you have a consistent theory that uh, uh, extends uh, finite sum of Frankel set of in the language of sets, then uh, there's a model of the ASD uh, such as a set product validates the theory. Uh, and this is the classical result that uh, uh, starts with constructing the alpha power of, uh, um, of, the, of the model uh, of T. So you need to be able to prove uh, that T has a model. And uh, then adds classes. Uh, such that the result is extension. So uh, it does not add classes that are already present in the model in the sense of sets. And this gives you a, a model uh, of the ASD. And uh, it follows that the uh, ASD is conservative because uh, you take a formula that is uh, not provable, then you can construct a model such as that. Uh, formula is not valid in the model of ASD. Uh, so I know that uh, people in the seminar would be interested in the set uh, redacts of uh, models of the ASD, but uh, all I can do at this moment is to, uh, to point uh, out the paper of uh, Kudlak and so forth, which where such topics are discussed uh, in great extent. By the way, I'm probably running out of time, so I should better speed up a little. Uh, I want to, so now I want to go uh, uh, through the history briefly. Uh, the first uh, uh, influence I want to mention is uh, uh, Ladislav van der Rieger. Uh, Ladislav van der Rieger is uh, perhaps familiar to some of you as uh, one name in the collocation Rieger National Relativist in English Institute, but uh, he was uh, um, active researcher in many areas. He also worked in algebraic logic and uh, cooperated with the Polish uh, uh, School of Algebraic Logic, uh, at least at one period of time. And he was also interested in non-standard methods. So he was, of course, influenced by Skolamp's paper. And uh, 
based on uh, this Colum's paper and perhaps other uh, active research at that time, uh, roughly, that, uh, okay, so I forgot to mention uh, the connection between Rieger and uh, Vokenka. So Rieger uh, organized a seminar for students Actually, the Vopenka seminar, the famous uh, Vopenka school of set uh, theory in the 60s was uh, fashioned on the same principle, running uh, basically a seminar for advanced students of uh, mathematics. And the seminar was recurring and new people were coming in. This was started by Rieger in the late 50s. Vopenka frequented the seminar and also Hayek frequented the seminar briefly. Unfortunately, Rieger passed away in 1963, so the encounter well, in both cases was relatively short, but nevertheless, it had profound impact on Czech mathematical logic. Uh, and uh, uh, so Rieger not only founded the, 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 the recurring seminar, but also um, influenced uh, Vopienka towards uh, interest in non-standard methods. And one of the papers, actually, this paper, this paper about uh, non-standard models of uh, finite uh, MBG was discussed at the seminar, probably exactly at the time when Vopenka began to frequent the seminar. And the models are obtained from, uh, from a former series, uh, uh, extended the Ackermann interpretation to classes. Um, so he proves uh, he 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 proves that there's a standard model based on uh, based on a formal uh, actually formal expressions of this kind, where in the case of proper classes this k is just any integer, and uh, this is referred to as the standard model. And uh, then he developed uh, the axiomatization of the structures. And he demonstrated many examples where the, the, uh, the this, these structures provide models for uh, provided essentially non-standard models and even models with uh, uh, uncountable many integers. Um, Vopenka then uh, in um, his one of his uh, um, like um, essays that he that he wrote many years later remembered. Rieger as the as the uh, key influence that brought him to the investigation of uh, uh, non-standard uh, methods, and I wanted to mention. Aha, uh, okay. So I wanted to mention the. Of course, uh, another influence is uh, Robinson, and uh, it's uh, um, it's uh, um, uh, interesting to uh, um, try to figure out how exactly. Uh, Non in from from which uh, from which sources actually the uh, non standard methods me methods reached Rieger and uh, his uh, group. Uh, so Robinson was present with one of the uh, participants in the um, International Congress on Foundations of Mathematics uh, that was held in Warsaw in 1959, and uh, Rieger was there as well. So Rieger uh, and Robinson presented uh, a paper on uh, non-standard method models of arithmetic uh, at the Congress. But uh, the paper I've mentioned on the earlier slide uh, was published in 59, but actually submitted in 57. So uh, I think all of these uh, little bits of information just demonstrate that uh, the um, research in non-standard models, of course, was very active discipline at that time. And Rieger actually wrote a report about the Congress in which he uh, mentions uh, non-standard models, which he refers to as non-normal uh, of arithmetic and uh, of axiomatic set theory as a prominent topic of uh, this uh, of this Congress. And um, there's a book um, published in 69, which uh, uh, presents the contribution from, uh, from uh, this Congress. Um, Zuzana, course, Zuzana, can I just add something quickly? Yes. Because also at the same Congress and uh, the same, the same uh, proceedings, 
there is a paper of, Mag uh, of McDowell and Specker, and Specker was there. And so what was presented is the McDowell, what's known now as McDowell Specker theorem, that for development in uh, the model theory of, of Peano arithmetic was of great importance. So when he refers to many presentations, I think he probably refers to that as well. Yes. That, that, that was something that, that made big impression on many people. Yes, I'm not sure that we gave the... Okay, so so uh, as far as I remember about this report, you mentioned some names, but he mm -hmm. didn't specifically refer to papers which would uh, uh, deal with uh, non-standard models. But of course, uh, of course, uh, as you say, uh, um, mm -hmm. He would, I think Rieger would keenly, given that he was working on the same topic, on a similar topic, he would keenly uh, register all uh, represented material on, on non-standard uh, models. And um, the, of course, the influence of uh, Robinson is much more, it's much broader. In the sense of uh, the, um, presenting uh, the viable model of uh, uh, infinitesimal calculus, and this is what greatly intrigued uh, uh, Wopinka. But uh, Wopinka, as he uh, stresses often, uh, took a little bit different approach, and uh, namely the axiomatic approach. So he, uh, quite early on, he tried to extract some axioms uh, and uh, the principles on which uh, the uh, methods of NSA were based and uh, to progress axiomatically with them. So this is perhaps not uh, unfamiliar to you. And, uh, but but the, the encouragement uh, for doing this from NSA was huge, of course. Um, so the book, uh, uh, on the ASD uh, uh, says up front that this is the case, that uh, mathematically the ASD can be considered a form of non-standard analysis. He does not say axiomatically, he does not use that term very often, but he says that it's independent. And independent in the sense of not being, uh, not, uh, being dependent on the uh, on the model theory, on the on the considerations of uh, the algebra constructions and so on. So this is a recurrent topic. Uh, uh, Hayek, on the other hand, uh, would immediately refer to axiomatization. So he would say already in this paper about uh, uh, about semisets uh, in seventy three, he refers to open cast attempts to axiomatize uh, non standard analysis. And uh, Wopinka's approach is roughly this. Uh, as I said, he was trying to convince uh, people that uh, he presents a viable foundations for mathematics. So uh, he takes what he calls pre-theoretic concepts, such as uh, number domains, uh, natural numbers. And he demonstrates how they are uh, modeled in the theory. So uh, instead of uh, talking about interpretations, for example, he simply says that uh, uh, elements of the class N play the role of natural numbers in the universe of sets. So this is the one interpretation which uh, of Peano arithmetic, which we have discussed. But this is not what you would encounter in Wopinga's text. He says that they play the role. So <laughs> this, <laughs> this uh, 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 this formulation suggests that there's a role, or it says explicitly there's a role to be played uh, uh, by some objects of his theory. Um, similarly, in limit universes, uh, limit universes, by the way, are those universes that do not stipulate the existence of um, part of, of uh, proper subclasses of particular sets of concrete sets. I will get to that when I discuss this in a bit. So the role of standard natural numbers is played by Fn and so on. So this, this is uh, 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 this is uh, um, how uh, the foundational role of the ASD is discussed in Wolfinger's text. Uh, 
I probably skip rational numbers because they emerge as pretty much uh, the same as in as NSA. So you get, uh, of course, infinitesimals, and then you get the uh, aha. Green numbers are uh, uh, quotients of by the relation of uh, indiscernibility. So based on that, you can you could develop some non-standard uh, some uh, some some um, infinitesimal calculus. But neither of the books actually contains this development. There are some papers, but the books, as reviewers has also, have also noticed, somehow shy away from, uh, from doing that. Um, OK, so now more context. So uh, axiomatic development of non-standard analysis has been presented uh, uh, extensively in the book by Kanove and Jiken. And, uh, the book is based on uh, uh, the work of Karel Herbacek. And uh, in the introduction, the authors mentioned that uh, the foundational attempts were, or the axiomatization of non-standard analysis was uh, done independently in several places. One of them, of course, uh, is uh, the ASD, but the ASD is not discussed in the book, given that it is, um, based on uh, finite sum of Frankel. The last topic I want to mention, at least briefly, is uh, feasibility, which is uh, also a recurring topic in Wopenka's texts. I will read to you a quotation from a very famous uh, presentation. From two integers, k and l, one passes immediately to k to l. This process leads in a few steps to numbers which are far larger than any occurring in experience. Intuitionism, like ordinary mathematics, claims that this number 67 to 257 to 729, this number can be represented by an Arabic numeral. Could one not press further to criticism which intuition makes of existential assertions and raise the question, what does it mean to claim the existence of an Arabic numeral for the foregoing number, since in practice we are not in a position of obtaining it? Brawl appeals to intuition, but one can doubt that the evidence for it clearly is intuitive. Isn't it rather an application of the general method of analogy consisting in extending to inaccessible numbers the relations which we can completely verify for accessible numbers? As a matter of fact, the reason for applying this analogy is strengthened by the fact that there is no precise boundary between the numbers which are accessible and those which are not. If you don't know this quotation, I would like to invite you to guess who is speaking. Nelson? Sorry? Uh, I, I guess Nelson. No, it's much older, actually. Uh, it's uh, Paul Bernays, 1935, a lecture on Platonism and mathematics. This lecture is extremely intriguing because, among other things, it's uh, pluralistic uh, in its approach to foundation. So Bernays uh, calmly announces that uh, he's actually quite happy with uh, multiple foundations coexisting. And some uh, Parts of mathematics are amenable to um, classical treatment, and some other parts of mathematics are amenable to intuitionistic treatment. But he also says that the place for intuitionism is suspiciously so narrow between Platonism on the one hand and uh, strict finitism on the other hand, the feasibility considerations which are uh, represented, for example, by the considerations of uh, binary positional notation for this number. So uh, if we adhere to uh, uh, our intuitions, then we might not even consider this number finite. That's the, one of the gist of the, of the, of the lecture. Uh, similarly, in the um, proceedings of from the Congress on Infinitistic Methods, you will find a contribution by Alexander Yesenin Volpin, who was an uh, influential thinker at the time, and he uh, 
declared outright that he does not uh, uh, consider the number 10 to 12 feasible. Feasible means that you can count up to the number. So um, he was talking uh, a little bit mysteriously about number theories. It's uh, mm, disputable what exactly is meant by number theories. But he claims that there are, there's, a num there's a number series of feasible numbers such that this number does not belong to it. So this is the same uh, Congress where uh, Rieger was uh, present. And actually, Wopinka, in the, pre in the introduction to his book, actually refers to Yesenin Wopin. But he says that uh, apart from this uh, single point of reference, he does not actually have anything uh, uh, further to say, but there's a general feeling that uh, they might be sharing some uh, some uh, attitudes, uh, foundational attitudes. Opinka occasionally uh, speaks about so-called witness universes, and the witness universes are rise uh, on uh, extending the theory with the stipulation that there's a semi-set within some concrete set. And concrete set is probably, a, for example, a set of uh, natural numbers less than some, um, some, some uh, arithmetical term without, um, without uh, free variables. So um, <clears throat> ground term. Uh, but he, Wobbing actually doesn't say what he means, but uh, uh, I think he means this because he, he actually gives this example and this example without without uh, referring to uh, two Bernays or two Parix works, which, which I want to mention in the remaining time. Uh, he actually, uh, by giving this example, he sort of <laughs> refers tacitly to, to uh, the work of his predecessors and uh, um, declares the membership in this feasibility tribe. Uh, the problem is, of course, that uh, that um, uh, as in the in the shape in which AST is presented, uh, the speed up technique applies. So, um, so um, the the quotation as it stands somehow. Is not very convincing that you would count up successfully to, and uh, you would be able to reasonably sustain a theory in which this number emerges as uh, as uh, infinite. But uh, Wopinka admits that he would be willing, under conditions, to contemplate uh, contradictory extensions of the AST. And the uh, the theory of witnessed universes in this uh, in this manner was actually never developed. It is occasion occasionally mentioned, but it has not been the theory has not been presented in neither of the books. And uh, uh, I want to mention a work which is uh, discussed in Hayek's paper on uh, on semisets in the context, of course, the uh, semisets uh, in the theory of the context of theory of semisets, which extends the um, general frame, which extends Gerald Bernays with the axiom of infinity. But uh, anyway, this paper demonstrates that at the time uh, the AST was conceived, uh, Parix material was already available to the group. And it probably had some influence on the feasibility considerations that were eventually made it into Wopinka's text. So the uh, this is uh, probably well known. Uh, this is uh, just a um, presentation of uh, um, Parix um, um, almost consistency results for for uh, for cuts defined by predicates that are not uh, present that are not definable in the arithmetical language. Uh, so this is kind of other uh, side of the coin of the speed up uh, results. And uh, 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 all of these considerations are reflected uh, in the relatively new paper by Walter Dean, who discusses the AST in, uh, uh, in the connection to vagueness. I didn't uh, stress this, but of course, uh, the AST uh, can be considered uh, as a theory of vagueness, 
and the the, the uh, vagueness is intimately connected to theoretical situations such as the such such as were actually considered by SN in Boltman, for example, in uh, some theories that progress uh, smoothly from um, um, from uh, elements where some predicates apply to elements where some predicates no longer apply to the objects. Uh, so the AST is, as a theory of limit universes is consistent, probably, in uh, Samuel Frankel, and uh, it can be as such, it can be considered a consistent uh, uh, theory of uh, vagueness. Of course, the, uh, then um, it will not address uh, the vagueness phenomena on, on, uh, on a finite series of uh, numbers uh, progressing from, from um, yes to no on, uh, as uh, in, the, in, the, in the setting which I have mentioned about regarding feasibility. But anyway, uh, at least uh, as a, a theory for non-standard uh, models, it, is, uh, uh, it models vagueness. And uh, Dean points out that uh, perhaps uh, when we look for uh, models of uh, theoretical situations, uh, we are mistaken in always looking for, in, from, in always uh, contemplating the situation from the model theoretic point of view. So I will get, again read the quotation from this paper to you. Feasibilism is unlike most traditional approaches to vagueness in that it seeks to provide proof theoretic rather than model theoretic account of the meaning of vague predicates. Uh, since uh, theories like T one plus above the, the the inconsistent theory contemplated in the Parik paper are inconsistent in principle sense of classical proof theory. They also do not possess interpretations in the sense of classical model theory. So the uh, gist of this uh, is that uh, um, the proof theoretic uh, 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 treatment of um, uh, feasibilism might be preferable, even though the theory is uh, in a controlled sense contradictory. And Dean also suggests uh, using much weaker arithmetical theories. Uh, uh, he ex for example, he presents uh, a result about the um, non-totality of a function, this function bin, which uh, allows you to, to, to switch between unary and binary representation and context of two sorted arithmetic. Uh, I don't know whether this was ever the switch, uh, switch to weaker theories uh, was ever contemplated in the context of the AST. Okay, so um, this is just a recap of the timeline of events. The events which I have not mentioned are some in the, in the what I said at the beginning are the political events uh, in my country, uh, 1968, the invasion of Czechoslovakia, and again, 1989, the Velvet Revolution, and the development of the ISD falls into this period, the 20 years between these two events. Popinka did have some, um, some political troubles. Uh, he was able to maintain his uh, position, but uh, reportedly he was for some period of time prevented from publishing his work. And uh, it was, for example, very difficult for the group, for the people in the group uh, to get, to lay their hands on uh, new papers. Uh, so um, this may be one of the reasons why uh, the alternative set theory remained uh, a local project. Of course, uh, there may be much more compelling reasons of all kinds. Uh, namely, it is just one of the many attempts to present alternative foundations. And it is a militant attempt. So to conclude, uh, I would recap uh, new development of infinity in terms of uh, indefiniteness. Infinity, Wopinka's infinity is uh, indefiniteness. It's a potential infinity and that is uh, rendered in uh, 
in the uh, in the presence of uh, um, proper classes. It is inspired by non-standard models, but it is axiomatic. So Wopenka sees himself as presenting new ontology without uh, the support of uh, ZFC. He also develops a lot of uh, metamathematics, model theory, and so on. Um, uh, the AST was considered as an open system, and that might have uh, contributed to uh, uh, the fact that it is a little bit, the uh, results are a little bit uh, scattered, actually. Um, they did not become widely known. Neither the preceding theory of semisets nor the open set theory is uh, well known at present, but it is occasionally mentioned as, the, as one of the alternative foundational attempts. Uh, the theory of witness universes, which would probably uh, emerge as um, classically contradictory, was never developed, but it is uh, sometimes uh, mentioned uh, uh, wistfully, I would say. And lastly, uh, which is a pity actually, Popenka did not uh, uh, make efforts to compare his uh, foundational attempts to uh, the efforts of uh, other people. And that does not only concern other axiomatic non-standard theories, but also, for example, the work in the theory of vagueness, which would have been uh, quite fruitful, in my opinion. So here are some papers which I did not manage to refer to properly, and I would like to thank you for your attention. Okay, let's thank our speaker. Thank you, Susanna. Um, and we can open it up for questions. Well, I um, this uh, this is a kind of a silly question, but on your uh, like three slides on your on your chronology, there was a name uh, who was active from nineteen sixty eight to nineteen eighty that you did not mention. Who was that? Uh, Polivka. Okay. Yes, Polivka. Um, so I didn't mention, so I did not, Polivka was a philosopher. Um, and uh, he was a student of, from the uh, philosophical circle of uh, Jan Patočka, the eminent mm -hmm. uh, Czech phenomenologist. He was uh, probably the person who kind of uh, mm, um, brought phenomenology to uh, Wopenka's attention. And for a long time, uh, the people at the Faculty of Mathematics and Physics actually held a philosophical seminar. And the seminar was, uh, um, seminar was uh, consisted in studying uh, phenomenological texts uh, with the guidance provided by Wopenka and some other uh, Czech uh, phenomenologists. And you will certainly uh, you will certainly encounter references to phenomenology pretty often in a Wopenka's text, namely he wrote an essay in the, which was published in the in the proceedings from uh, from the uh, symposium uh, in Stara Lesna, uh, which is uh, dedicated to um, the philosophical roots of BASD. I didn't refer to this so much, and this is precisely for the reason that Wopinka did it himself, although I think it will bear another look or two, uh, especially uh, in attempt to put it into some context, because he does not give any references, for example, in this essay. But uh, Polivka was uh, his... Um, connection to the Czech phenomenological circle. Mm -hmm. to um, thank you. Thank you. That's that yeah, that's, that's actually very interesting. But um and uh, it's a Carl Carl is no longer here. He, he said he would have to leave right after the talk. So it's a yes. it's a pity. Uh because I wanted to ask him a question in relation to what you were talking about. Because you know I I actually have to to, to to everybody else. I actually invited Susanna to, to to give this talk for us. I knew that she was giving the talk in Prague uh, uh, some time ago. And you know, when I was a student in Warsaw, and 
And so maybe ASD wasn't that widely known in the world, but it was certainly very well known mm -hmm. in Warsaw those days, you know, in 19... Uh, 70s and 1980s, I was a great enthusiast of what's happening, and it seemed that this was this approach, and especially ASD was a very good formal uh, theory to do versions of non-standard analysis. There seemed to be have been plenty of evidence. You can do topology, in it, you can do real analysis, you can do measure theory. So I wanted to ask Carl, but also ask, ask you because then you know this so sort of this uh, axiomatic extensions of, of set theory when you have notion of non-standardness have sort of blossomed in various ways. There are many alternative and competing theories. And I wondered why you know, why alternative set, set theory did not become a sort of a standard. What, what, what was deficient in ASD so that those other theories were required? Well, that's a very interesting question. I'm not sure that uh, whether Professor Habacek would uh, know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we would. But how about how about Misha? Misha, do you know the answer? Hmm. I'm I'm not a logician. I wouldn't I wouldn't dare open my mouth uh, <laughs> to, to rule on this kind of question. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Well, you can form many. Hypothesis. I, I think Chaim wants to say something. Chaim. Oh, you have to turn on your speaker, though. You have to unmute him. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Look, I wanted to mention my paper from 2010, which is called Vagueness, Tolerance, and Contextual Logic, which appeared in Synthes. And I see now that there is another paper which is relevant, directly relevant to it from 2018. And at, in the paper from vagueness, uh, tolerance and conceptual logic, this is really dealt with, deals with the psoriasis and provides a certain kind of an approach which is directly relevant to the topics that you mentioned here. I do not think that vagueness is a nice kind of position for a mathematician to take. <laughs> I would say that that vagueness, I I I don't know, I think I, I changed my view here that mathematics is the only subject in science or scientific theories or natural theories in which there is no vagueness. That would be my definition of mathematics. And when you start appealing to vagueness, you bring in considerations from the philosophy of language. For example, a strict finitist would say, well, uh, there is just a finite number, the greatest finite number. I mean, he is committed to that, right? And uh, you ask him, okay, so what is the biggest number that exists? And this is a very puzzling question because if S exists, why shouldn't S plus one exist? Because you can translate from S, reduce statements about S plus one to statements about S and so on. And vagueness is a very nice out, uh, escape route. And it says, well, this is vague. I think this is a high price for mathematics to, to pay. I think vagueness belongs to philosophy of language. It does not belong to mathematics. But uh, so I do not see that this is, that vagueness would be a convincing argument in this respect. That's all I wanted to. Mm. Maybe well, I would. Like, yes, maybe I would like to say also several words for vagueness, but I think that uh, Vopinka wanted to mathematize vagueness. So uh, all, all our world is vague, yes, but mathematics is an idealization which uh, works with. Uh, 
phenomenons of our world in its idealized form. And Wopienka wanted to idealize vagueness. And I think non-standard analysis has means to for this. And it was Wopienka's, I think it was Wopienka's aim to do it. Hmm. Uh, I, th that is perfectly, I, that is consistent with my position that uh, you, you can use mathematics to, to model all kinds of phenomena and so on. So mathematically, this is a valid, but here we are, my question relates to the foundations of mathematics. What is mathematics? And mathematics can produce models for vagueness. This is a purely mathematical model for vagueness, but the mathematics can give also models for physics. In mathematics, you have uh, models uh, that uh, you can develop models in mathematics that will model quantum theory and so on. So mathematics is certainly the basis for which all natural science can develop models. But my point is that mathematics itself is not vague, that's all. You have, the, you have a mathematical model for vagueness, but mathematics itself need not be vague. Of course, mathematics needn't be vague. I agree, <laughs> it's clear. Uh, for, 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 for Wopinka, the problem was, of course, that uh, some sort of uh, indefiniteness was uh, present in the definition of infinity for him. So you, you, you can't back away from that. Uh, yeah. Uh, can we have uh, an access to your slides or will there be a way of downloading the slides of this talk yes. I, I will send the slides to the organizers if that's okay yeah you can send uh you can send it to us and uh okay. and we will post it on the website i also wrote a paper on wopinka's uh, on wopinka's continuum and infinity because i think that the most in important and uh, the most innovative part of his theory is uh, the philosophy that is behind his um, mathematics. So I wrote a paper and I also uh, quote your paper, Mr. <laughs> so I, if, if can I, I send you the oh. reference? Here's Carol's back. You can ask him. Roman, you can ask Carol a question. Yes, <laughs> I'm back, but I'm on public transportation here. <laughs> for a bus. Oh, this is perfect. It's a perfect spot to answer the question. Uh, Karel, my, my questions were very, very sort of precise in the sense that I, when I was a student, I thought that ASC was a very good theory for non-standard analysis, but there were, there are many other uh, axiomatic theories that followed to somehow circumvent some deficiency. But, but what is, is deficient in AST so that it did not become a standard for doing non-standard analysis? What's missing? Uh with AST? Yeah. Well, I would say, one, uh, Wopienka uh, never wanted to, as far as I know, never wanted to uh, call it uh, a model for non-standard analysis because he he was opposed to Cantorian set theory. And B, well, Cantorian set theory is not included, so it's, uh, it's an alternative rather than a, uh, something that everyone uh, well, most mathematicians are familiar with, I would say. Uh, I, I see, you know, but this is this is what Susanna explained at the beginning, right? That you know, yes, the, the AST, the, 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 the acronym was ad adopted later for a particular set of axioms. But looking, for, you know, from with the hindsight, why wasn't it enough to develop an axiomatic theory that would have become a standard, regardless of what Wopinka thought about the philosophy of all of this? Well, um, I don't think I understand the question, I must say. Well, you know, so it's a, first of all, it's a very simple theory. I, I, what I like is sort of the clarity of the axioms. It's it's a simple theory, right. So, but but it's, it contradicts uh, ZFC or whatever, right? So it's an, 
something that people have oh, to. Oh, 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 I understand. So, in, so right. So, like in those other theories, like uh, what Bisha was talking about, you you start with some like ZF and you add on yeah, top to be able to do powerful things. But but this whole you know, like but the book about mathematics in alternative set theory provided sort of the guidelines that show that actually a lot can be done without ZF. Yes. Yes. Mm. Well, uh... but, I, but I understand. Right. So this is this is this is. Certainly, a, a good reason. I, I don't think what. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, have you, Roman? Have you seen the review by Levy of the ASD? And uh, he reviewed both uh, the books, uh, uh, Rekha, the TSS book and the ASD book. Who, who did? Azria Levy. Oh, I see. I didn't. He said uh, he said that uh, the author of the ASD is asking. Uh, uh, the working mathematicians to abandon uh, classical sub theory and work in some alternative foundations instead, but he has not presented uh, the compelling reasons for doing so. So once you do that, once you abandon the classical sub theory, classical framework, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, adopt uh, any kind of alternative foundation, you find yourself very much on your own. So you have to have compelling reasons for doing so. And uh, the reasons that Popinka presented are just not enough for him. So that mm -hmm. would be an answer from mm -hmm. someone who has taken the trouble to go through mm -hmm. uh, much, yeah. uh, to, to go through both the texts. And um, right, but, but, so, so, it's a bit irritant, but I think that's <laughs> point. So uh, sorry, let me let me interject here that I actually need to leave. You, can, you all can stay, but I just want to um, Put yeah, this on the to, recording. Um, so let me just say, so, so let me thank Susanna again. And let me uh, announce next week, we will have a talk from Beloir Jamel on uh, generalizations of uh, representations of unlimited natural numbers. So um, uh, I, I think it's very much related to what Carl uh, spoke about uh, recently. Um, so so thank you again. I'll, I'll stop the recording, but I will leave the, the meeting open for, for you all to continue your discussions. Um, if you if you continue to have them, um, thank you.